Hey guys, this is a Hydrotherm 125C um, heating system. It's uh, obviously uh, um, a water heating system that heats a whole house. This house has uh, five zones. So you can see one valve per zone here. This red one is a valve, but we just replaced it. So, <clears throat> okay. So in a nutshell, here's how the system works. Okay, so this valve here is your main pressure regulator valve coming in. On this side here, that leads to the cold water uh, coming in from the house. It goes to the pressure regulator valve. <clears throat> this pressure regulator valve holds it to about somewhere between 12 and 22 PSI for the whole system. And then there's a lever on top here. You can see that lever here on top that um, when you're flushing the system, you could hold the valve open and flush the system. But when you when you do that, you hold the valve open, the, the water coming in is probably close to 30 or 40 PSI. Then what you need to do, if this, if this valve holds open to flush the system, you'll need to, <clears throat> in here, Okay, where you see the you see the pumping system, you'll need to hook this up to a drain and drain the water. Okay, relieve the pressure and drain the water as you're uh, <clears throat> as you're lifting that valve and trying to flush it. If you want to flush it a little faster, what we did was we um, we hooked up a hose from this uh, from the hot water tank into one of these valves here. Okay, into one of these valves, open the valve, hook it up from the hot water tank into one of these valves. Okay, this goes to the drain, and then we can flush each one, each one of these uh, lines or zones with the water from the hot water tank. So there's, there's not a special water, <clears throat> it's just uh, city water coming in, and uh, all the while making sure that you don't exceed about 20 or uh, about 25 or 30 psi pressure. <clears throat> this green tank down here is um, is a there's an air diaphragm in it, so there's a big rubber balloon in it. And what happens is, as a heater heats up the water and the water expands, this takes up the expansion of the water. So these tanks don't last forever. These tanks um, last for a few years, um, however many years. And what happens is, if the diaphragm breaks, then as the water heats up this thing fills up because there's no more bubble and this thing fills up the pressure builds up and what happens is when the pressure builds up the uh, this pressure relief valve pops open okay and then water pressure is relieved through here and you can see it going right down to the drain there okay this valve here isn't really meant to regulate the pressure this is a an emergency blast relief pressure valve so when it opens, it, there's a chance that it could stay open, but it's really not meant to regulate pressure. It's just an emergency relief. This is your pressure regulator here. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously, uh, this is a this is a flush a flush valve and a shutoff valve, one per zone. All right. And uh, what you see down here, this is the uh, electric pump that circulates the water for uh, all the zones. And then the zone, I'll show you the control, the zone controls in a second. This is the gas uh, regulator, the, the pilot light and the gas regulator here. And this little box in here, okay. Let's see if we can open it. Okay, well, I can't seem to open it. This little box in here, there's a controls that controls the temperature of the um, of the the shutoff temperature of the boiler. So it's right now it's set about 160, 180 uh, Celsius, but that's adjustable in this box here. This what you see here is a there's actually three gauges here. Two, I guess. Um, one is a pressure gauge. That monitors the pressure of the whole system on the on this side on the pump side and it's also a temperature gauge now i uh, didn't really trust it so what we did is we uh <clears throat> we had another pressure regulator that we 
attached on here to measure our own temp to measure our own pressure regulator. Uh, so kind of double up. It was very important to keep the pressure, make sure the pressure didn't get too high. This is obviously the gas line. Okay, this is the gas line coming down. Of course, the gas shut off. So, anyways, I think that's all from this side of it. Uh, obviously, uh, this big, this big gray box here. This is the actual uh, heating unit. Receives the gas from the city, the natural gas, and heats the water. And then there's a uh, some kind of a thermostat in there. Shuts off the water. <clears throat> you can see the thermostat wires here. I guess this is the thermostat wires. And it shuts off the water uh, when it's hot enough. Okay. And that's all I can. Uh, so I can. Oh, oh, these things here. <clears throat> so this is a uh, kind of a pressure relief valve. And what it does is. Um, not really pressure relief. Sorry, this uh, this is uh, to, to vent the uh, air in the system. So as the water circulates and as a bubble co bubble collects, uh, the bubbles float to the top. And when it, when there's air here, this valve opens to release the air. And then uh, when it senses water at the bottom, then it, it or water pressure at the bottom, then it, it closes again. This can be open and closed. This should be open just a little bit. Generally. Again, the emergency relief valve, emergency pressure relief valve that's really not supposed to go off. If this pipe is getting hot, then you know that this valve is opening. If this valve is opening, then you know that probably that diaphragm reservoir thingy <clears throat> is probably burst or not doing its job or full of water. It's not supposed to be full of water. It's supposed to have an air pocket at the bottom, and then you can, um, so that with the air pocket, it, it's able to absorb the expansion of the water as it's heated up but of course if the air if the uh, diaphragm is popped the air leaks out and probably leaks through this thing here and then that thing fills up with water unable to relieve the pressure so this thing is, starts to open and this pipe gets warm gets a little wet down there that tells you you have a bit of a problem okay now let's start talking about the uh, control system <clears throat> this thing here Screw it close. This thing here is a transformer. Uh, so what it does is it takes 110 volts from the from the um, uh, from the house and kicks it down to 24 volts alternating current. Now what that does is it goes over to the control side of the system, which is in behind here. So I'll take you around there. I'll show you. All right, so this is the control side of the system. And what happens is each one of these zones has a thermostat. The thermostat has two wires going into it. One of the wires coming in is white, has 24 volts alternating current. The other wire goes to a motor. The motor is in here. And what the motor does is a motor turns a valve and opens a valve and lets the water flow through that zone. Okay, now you notice here there's four wires here. Okay, there's four wires here, two yellow and two red. The two yellow ones goes to the motor, right? And the two red one goes to a switch. So when the motor opens a switch, <clears throat> yeah, when the motor turns, okay, it opens a valve, it opens a valve in here, lets the water flow, and when the, when the motor opens all the way, it touches a switch, it, it, it turns on a switch, a little clicky switch, and that signals the, the, the heating system to turn the gas and heat up the water, okay? Now, you notice here, if you look real close here, that there is a lever here, okay? So when the lever is up, okay, let's see here. All right, when the lever is all the way up in this case, you know that the valve is closed, okay? When the lever is all the way down, you know it's at that zone the heater is on, okay? When the heat, now what you could do is, you notice here that you, you might be wondering, well, why is there a lever? Well, you, you could push this lever down, and this on these Honeywell ones, you can open the, um, 
you can open the valve manually but these Honeywell ones when you open the valve manually you can't open it far enough to click on the switch to turn on the heater okay it won't and they were designed to not let you do that I think probably to meet some kind of a city code or something so you can open it okay um, <clears throat> but you can't uh, you can't open it far enough to click on the switch to turn on the heater I mean if you're smart enough you could probably uh, connect two of these wires this is what it does it closes these two red wires and that should turn on the heater itself but uh, that'd be a bit of, bit of hacking so obviously you know for the thermostat there's one zone there's one control valve per zone okay so let me show you what a control valve looks like all right okay so some of the parts here okay so this is a this is the, what the control valve looks like these are very kind of universal Honeywell ones made in Canada uh, apparently they are very popular around here okay so you can see here that uh, the control valve okay the control valve you can see right in the middle there latches onto uh, the brass uh, the brass coupling okay and what you can do is these two screws here okay there's, there's one screw here and there's one screw right here you could actually you could actually if you need to replace the the motor you could you could just unscrew this one here this one here you could pop this off okay without having to unsolder the valve really cool so it comes apart like this okay and here you can see the motor part okay all right so there's four you can see there's four wires coming in Okay, you can see there's four wires coming in, two red and two and two yellow. Okay. And you can see the two the two red ones, the two red wires here, it goes to the switch, which is right here. Okay, it goes to the switch, which is this gray thing here. And what happens as the motor turns, okay, there's a little lever that pushes on this little black button there, right? That pushes that black button. And what that what that black button does is it closes the terminal, connects these two red wires together, send the signal down to the heating system to turn the gas and turn on the igniter. Okay. And uh, so you, you can see the motor here, and this is the lever. So okay. So as the motor turns on, the lead as the motor turns on, the, the, the lever comes this way, and you can turn on manually like what I'm doing here. All right, and you can open it manually just like that. So you can tell that when this when this valve is open in this fashion, you can tell that you know this is you know the uh, the the motor that zone is being activated and it's working. All right, and if you latch it there, then it stays there. But you can see here that uh, where is it? Okay. Okay, you can see here that this. Maybe, I'm not sure you can see that. But there's a metal plate here that is not far enough to touch this, uh, to touch this, uh, to activate that black switch. But if I push with my hand, okay, I can, uh, I can push far enough to activate that switch. There, you see that? So I could push that, I could push that metal lever far enough to activate it. So the motor can push it, can, can turn that lever far enough to activate the switch. Manually, you can't. So when you act, when the motor turns, it turns this thing here. Okay, it turns this thing here just like that. It turns roughly about 90 degrees. Okay, and you can see there's a little ball valve here. Okay, you can see there's a little ball there that opens and closes. Very simple system. All right. So this one is soldered in the pipe, and you don't have to replace this um, if you if you're just replacing this thing here. When you when you take the motor out, what you want to do is you want to you want to turn this one by hand, okay? You want to turn this one by hand to make sure it feels nice and smooth and feels okay. There's a chance that um, there's a chance that the ball in there is all corroded. Uh, you won't you won't really you won't really know that by turning it. I guess you just have to kind of. Uh, trust it and you can kind of turn it to feel that it's okay okay and this thing you can pop this thing off this thing pops right back on there and it screws in you see where it screws in screws in here screws
screws in here. Okay, and these two are kind of dowels to locate in its place. All right, <clears throat> now just to let you know, this is uh, there, Motor's, motorized valve part number for you. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. Uh, and that's all I can think about. Uh, I can't think about anything else I can show you about the system. Oh yeah, okay. Talk about this mess of wiring here. So, so, um, <clears throat> so eventually these two wires here, the two yellow wires, okay, need to be spliced off. You can see here, okay, needs to be spliced off to each zone, right? See the white wire there? So each yellow wire needs to be spliced off to each thermostat. Each thermostat is going to come back to the yellow wire, okay, and then power up the motor when it turns on. The thermostat is really just a simple on and off switch. It either connects the power or disconnects it. That's it. The red wire should all splice back into, um, should all splice back into, ouch, shit. Okay, the red wire should all splice back into um, common connection because that goes back to the, uh, the, the heating system to tell it when to, to, to tell it when to turn on and like I said I should be able to short a couple of wires and make it turn on by its by itself but uh, that would be kind of hacking and I really don't want to do that unless I don't have to and you can see here that where the the brown wire comes in from the wall okay there's five zones there uh, there's five wires there one going to each zone of the house coming to here connecting to each of the five uh, each of the five um, valves here. Okay, guys. All right, and another uh, another uh, pressure, um, not a pressure relief, not a pressure regulator, but uh, it um, uh, is meant to bleed air. So these should be open just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the uh, one more thing I want to show you. is um okay so in its very simplest form these uh these type of thermostats okay are um are uh, they're just simple on and off switches right so it's a temperature and when it drops below the certain temperature it clicks there's probably a little relay in here that clicks it connects the connects two terms together and these two these two wires it connects those two wires together all right don't know why my camera's not focusing. Let's try. Okay, connects these two wires together, and then if you measure these two with a voltmeter, you should measure 24 volts alternating current between them. 24 volts is not really not enough to shock you, so you can go ahead and touch it. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, so if you're if you want to test the thermostat, and if you know that you know if you're not sure the thermostat's working, what you can do is you can just um, touch these two wires together, you should see maybe a little bit of a spark and uh, and then that heating zone should come on, okay? So that's about all. Let me think, I'm just gonna go through this one more time, um, see if I forgot anything. Okay, that's main pressure relief valve, or pressure regulator. That switch on top, that lever on top is for flushing it. Do not turn that lever on, pull that lever up, unless you are relieving the system of pressure and um, measuring the pressure as well. <clears throat> um, these ones here are to shut off for each zone, and these ones here are to drain the, to drain the zones or to, um, you can hook the water up to here to flush each zone individually. So you can flush, so in addition to doing that, you can hook this up to uh, city water, you can, flush this, you can flush each zone while relieving the whole system of water from here. Uh, the main pump, this gray box is, of course, a heater, the control, the uh, pressure valve, <clears throat> temperature valve, pressure valve. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Hydrotherm 125C uh, water boiler and its control system. Okay, thanks for watching.